Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Andrew Townsend. I'm an e-learning evangelist here at eLearning Brothers. Today in our webinar, we'll be discussing the hard value of soft skills training. This webinar will be recorded. We'll send a copy of it out in a follow-up email after the webinar later today. We'll also get this posted on our blog later in the week, so you'll be able to find it on our website at any time. If you have questions during the webinar, we'll be ready to answer your questions uh, in the questions panel. We'll also be trying to bring some of these questions up to Chris and uh, have a, a conversation uh, at certain points throughout the webinar. So please do use that questions panel as you see fit. Like I mentioned, we do have Chris, Chris Willis, our senior project manager with us today. Thanks for joining us, Chris. We're excited to see what you've got to share with us. Also, we want to let everybody know that one of the things we do after the webinar is we try to follow up as soon as possible, sometimes just to get feedback. Most of the time, we would like to touch base and see if anyone needs some clarification on the webinar topic after the fact. All right, and without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and pass the screen over to you, Chris. Thanks, Andrew. Let's see here if I can uh, get this. where it'll give you the best image. Are you guys seeing my screen now? Yep, I see your browser. Awesome, awesome. Oh, it'd be better if I did that maybe? Yeah, that looks good. Perfect, thank you, thank you so much. All right, well, let's dig into this topic here. Um, so, most of you are involved in training in some capacity, and so you already know, it's no big secret to you that soft skills are crucial for developing your new hires and your emerging leaders in your organization. Um, so that I can help tailor my presentation a little bit more tightly to your specific needs. Why don't you use the questions panel now and let us know what is your specific role in soft skills training? Um, Andrew's gonna open that poll and collect that for us. If you don't see your uh, your title on here or your, your role, please do uh, select other and then let us know in the questions panel. But early votes are coming in. It looks like the vast majority of our audience is instructional designers and trainers. We do have a few e-learning developers and learning managers um, and uh, quite a few others. Uh, make sure you let us know what your title is in the questions panel. Um, but I'll leave this open for about five more seconds. Three two, one, and here's those results. So, like I said, about 63% of our audience is instructional designers, trainers, 19% e-learning developers, 9% e-learning managers, 6% uh, other. So as the others are coming in, there's a multimedia, VR, AR, MR, UI, UX. Um, <laughs> there's, uh, and 3% business or HR. Are, are here with us. So uh, kind of a widespread, but the majority are instructional designers and trainers. Awesome, you guys are gonna dig this. I'm gonna give you a lot of uh, research and information that you can take back to your organization to make a case for soft skills. And then, uh, let's see here. Excuse me, just a minute here. Organize my screen better, there we go. And then one more, what interests you most around soft skills training? Are you developing new hires, emerging leaders? Are you interested in the ROI of soft skills? Um, are you here to learn a little bit more about customizable courseware? Um, or other, like are you an e-learning brothers groupie? If so, thank you, love to have you too. But please let us know, why are you here? So that again, I can help tailor some of my conversation with you around your specific needs. So this one's much more spread out as the uh, the polling is happening. Uh, our audience seems to be split four ways uh, and a lot more others are coming in. So we've got one groupie <laughs> here with us. <laughs> Thanks, Neil. I uh, hope you enjoy this. Uh, soft skills for existing employees or for those who have forgotten their soft skills. That's a great one, a refresher Thank you. course. Yes. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this poll in about five seconds. So if you'd like to vote, now is your chance. Three, two, one, and here's those results. So 30% uh, of our audience developing new hires, 25% developing emerging leaders, 19% soft skills training ROI, 16% customizable courseware, 
and then 9% other, um, all ranges already developing, interested in more ways to evaluate, things like that. Sweet. You guys are awesome. This is a fabulous audience. Um, so we're going to have a lot of fun here. So I need to jump into it because I've got like so much for you. We're going to talk about what does the research tell us about the value of soft skills training? And we're going to provide some proofs that you can take back to your organization to make that ROI. Um, we're going to look at a case study strategy. Um, we're actually going to dig into how Google uh, helped prove uh, through Project Oxygen, how they helped uh, use a methodology to prove the value of soft skills training for managers in their organization. And then we'll look a little bit into customizable courseware. Just really briefly, we'll touch on that at the end. Um, but once we're done here, you'll have a lot of information you can use to make the case for customizable courseware in your organization. Um, so without further ado, uh, what are we talking about when we talk about soft skills? Soft skills are the personal attributes that enable you to interact effectively and harmoniously with other people. And then specifically professional soft skills are how we do that at work. Um, we work together in teams, a lot of us, you know, like myself in remote teams, and we need soft skills to be able to work effectively and harmonious, harmoniously. In fact, soft skills are how we get work done at work. So when we're talking about soft skills, we're talking about things like attitude, collaboration, communication, emotional intelligence, your flexibility, uh, the thing that the, the nebulous thing called the work ethic, these all fall under the category of soft skills as opposed to hard skills or technical skills, which are in contrast, they're things like process, methodology, technical proficiency. Um, when we start digging into what we call the STEM skills, science, technology, engineering, math, those are all hard skills. So, you know, Soft skills, hard skills, really, they're two sides of the same coin. It's not that one is more important to the, than the other, or we need one, or we don't need the other. We need them both. The whole person, today's superstar worker, um, or today's rock star worker in ELB parlance, that person is going to be well-balanced and actually be uh, really strong in both areas, the hard skills and the, and, and the soft skills. So if you need to be so proficient at both, and we know that the best employees are proficient at, at both, why is sometimes making the case for soft skills training so hard? And it's because, well, why don't you tell me, why do you think uh, organizations resist investing in soft skills training? Go ahead and use the questions panel and let Andrew know, and, and he'll give us a summary here. Why do you think or some organizations resist investing in soft skills training? People are saying that it's very difficult to measure or prove ROI. ROI. Um, it costs money. Um, lots of difficult to determine ROI. Hard to define. Intangible. Not measurable. Leaders don't see the value. They don't know the value. They have preconceived misconceptions. That's a good one, too. Um, and to, to dig up this information takes too much time. Uh, there's high turnover. That could be another big issue. Um, they should already have these skills. I like that one. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's right. in quotes, by the way. This person doesn't <laughs> uh, experience that. Results are delayed. Know. That's another good one. What was that? Results are delayed. Oh, results are delayed. That's absolutely right. But the results are delayed in all training, aren't they? I mean, you know, in, in, in any research, the results are delayed. But yeah, absolutely. I love this audience. I just love this audience. You guys, you're, you're my peeps. You're singing the song of my people. Um, it's hard to justify the hard value of soft skills training. And business leaders are constantly doing this This budget juggling thing. Budgets are finite. Okay. Do I invest in A or B? And to make the decision, do I invest in A or B? They're looking for some kind of uh, hard data 
that's going to show them that they're going to get the best ROI from their monetary investment. So when you go to them to train with training and you say, um, we need to do training, we're rolling out this new tool and uh, in order to get the best bang for our investment in this rollout, we need to invest in, in training. And they look at a percentage of the entire uh, initiative and take and take that percentage and they can put that in training. That's a real easy decision to make. You know you're gonna get an ROI. There's a lot of data, there's a lot of best practices. But when you're coming to the um, to leadership and you're saying, I have a hypothesis that our communication skills are very poor among our engineering team and that we would improve our business performance by Y percent if we invest in communication training. That's a much, much, much harder case to make. So there's not a lot of data out there specifically to that that says if I invest this much in communication training, my our work or our performance will, will improve by Y amount. So we have to look at other ways of bringing data together and get creative to tell the data story in order to make that case. Let's take a look at that. Here's some proofs from research that you can use if you get creative, and if you look at, again, how this kind of data all ties together, it makes a really strong case for the value of soft skills. Now, as I go through these proofs, there, you're going to see the little links on the bottom of some of the screens. Now, don't bother trying to screen cap them or write them down. Andrew has for you in the email that's going to go out after this uh, presentation because you're here you will get a follow-up email. It'll have the link to this presentation. It's also going to have a link to a bibliography that has all of the research links in it, which will be a lot easier. So you can just pay attention and follow along and participate. Um, if you've been to my presentations before, you've seen this data. I like to use this one simple, simply to just kind of remind us that we're in a different world. Millennials especially move from gig to gig. And in most of our organizations, we have an increasing number of contractors or contingents. And as we turn over and some folks move out of the workforce and new ones move in, we have a, a larger percentage of new hires. 23% of all workers have less than one year tenure with their current employer. So they're supposed to already come with soft skills. If they're supposed to come with their soft skills, where are they going to get them from? Um, and Employers rank, when they're looking for new hires, they rank communication skills as twice as important as managerial skills for new hires. Um, presumably, this is because employers assume that leadership and man managerial skills, especially as somebody like an MBA or somebody who's coming from a business uh, um, degree that they would come in with these leadership and managerial skills. What they find over and over again is that somebody can be ranked very highly or do very well in school, but not come to the job with strong communication skills. We have to teach our people how to work at work. And that's, that's traditionally where they learn. So soft skills are an important part of that equation. And in fact, the 2017 version of that same report, um, it's a corporate recruiter survey. They say that the top 10 skills ranked by employers as, as being the most important <laughs> skills that they're looking for in business school grads. You will see, you go all the way down the list and it's uh, uh, you have to get to number 11 before you get to quantitative and qualitative analysis. So uh, the rest of the skills that you're seeing there are all some form of soft skills, oral communication, listening, adaptability, presentation skills, uh, integrity, drive, cross-cultural sensitivity, all soft skills. So why do you care about what organizations are looking for in new hires? If they're looking for them in new hires, then 
what your recruiters know and what your organization knows already is that these are important skills to the success of your workforce. And if you're looking for them in your new hires, you obviously want them in your existing hires as well, right? We need to develop the same skills. Uh, different report, again, from uh, looking at, at uh, these are top skills that employers are looking for on resumes um, from the National Association of College em Colleges and Employers. Uh, the first seven of these, they're all similar, but they were asked differently. They were asked in different ways, using different words, uh, ability to work in a team, problem solving skills. Again, communication still ranks very highly, strong work, work ethic. In fact, communication ranks twice because they've split it by written and verbal. Leadership and initiative. And you get down to uh, number eight before we get to analytical and quantitative skills. What you'll find is if you look at survey after survey after survey, and when we get into the Google Oxygen, you're going to see it come up again that of all the attributes that are measured, um, when it comes to actually a measuring effectiveness at work, there's a very long list of soft skills that are rated very highly before you get to those that are actually the hard uh, performance skills and the technical skills. The soft skills have a lot to do with how we succeed at work and how well we do in a work environment. Moving away from like the new data higher now and looking a little bit uh, differently, let's 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 look at it from the standpoint of um, just take a different different swag at it here. And again, this doesn't mean that analytical analytical skills are at all becoming less important. I'm not going to dissect this chart. It's from a paper by David uh, Deming. He's an associate professor at the Harvard, Harvard Graduate School of Education. And he dug into this research on how the labor market is increasingly rewarding people who are both good at math and good at working with others. So this is an ongoing trend where social skills are valued and social skills and cognitive skills, the research shows they complement each other. It's not an A or B, it's A and B. And jobs that require low social skills are also the same jobs that are increasingly uh, at high risk of automation. And the last bit of data that I'll pull up before we go into our case here is that um, this study by uh, that was sponsored by McDonald's in the UK, um, it says that skills such as communication, initiative, team working, interacting with customers, they put a value to the UK economy, uh, particularly in businesses that rely on face-to-face -face interaction. They put a value of 88 billion pounds on uh, soft skills to the UK economy. They base that on um, lack of soft skills, um, increasing operating costs, losing business to competitors, problems meeting quality standards, delays in, in reducing new products. Um, another piece of data that you can use, it's not that any one of these data points or research reports is going to make a case to your leadership in and of itself. But when you add them up together, you find that all the roads kind of lead in the same direction. Soft skills are very, very important to success at work. So before we move into the case, does anybody have any questions about that at all? I'm going to give people a little bit of extra time. If you do have questions, please use that. Uh that questions panel, perhaps they're typing now, but uh, we don't have any questions as for right now. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing anything new coming in, so it looks like you're covering it great. Awesome, thanks, thanks. I always like to take a, take a little break and give you guys a chance. But again, all of those links are available on the uh, sheet that Andrew's gonna send out in the email, and I encourage you to dig into them a little bit deeper and use those yourself in your own slides and making when you do your setup to make your own business case for soft skills in your organization. Um, 
you can see that there's a lot of hard data in developing soft skills. So how do you turn data into strategy now? Um, let's take a look at what they did at Google. Um, how many of you are familiar with Google product, uh, Project Oxygen? Um, Majority of people are saying that they're not familiar. Oh, good. That's great. Because uh, I was I was uh, concerned we get this over being ah Project Oxygen. I've seen it before. That's so cool. You're gonna dig this. So what we're gonna do is take a look. We're gonna deconstruct Google Project Oxygen, and we're gonna take a look at how you can use a similar strategy for making the case for soft skills in your organization. So Google being a highly technical company, um, they value getting work done. As, as the slide says, they are a company built by engineers for engineers. And we even struggle with something like that here at eLearning Brothers. We have a lot of folks who are devs. They're e-learning they're e developers. We make goodies for e-learning developers. We have instructional designers and a lot of folks that spend their time designing, debugging, and we really highly value getting work done. So it's really hard when uh, sometimes to put a value on people who spend their time managing other people because it's, 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 it falls into that same level of measurement. How do you measure the value of somebody who isn't hands on 24 seven, 365 pushing through and getting hard work done? It's just difficult. So, at the root of that is the same question as the value of soft skills versus hard skills. So when we look at Google, in 2002, the co-founders of Google, uh, Larry Page and Sergey Brin, they actually questioned, do we even need engineering managers? So they did an experiment in creating a flat organization. They said it'll be more like what we would get in college and we'll just do the work and we'll collaborate and get it done. And what they found was it was a huge fail because all the employees uh, over to very quickly, employees started coming directly to uh, Larry Page and asking questions about expense reports and and with issues about interpersonal conflicts and other just daily nitty gritty sort of ops issues. And what they found is that working with people is messy and we need people who have the skills to be able to kind of direct that mess and keep things happening so that those who are the engineers and others can put their head down and actually get their work done. Not just any work, but the right work. What they found is the organization grew. They need people who were communicating strategy. They needed people that were helping employees prioritize and facilitate collaboration among employees. They needed people that were supporting career development so they could build up the next generation of leaders. And they needed to ensure that processes and systems were aligned with company goals. So all of those things are the realm of managers. They're kind of, they get hidden because it doesn't look like the same as when hard work is getting done. So <clears throat> what ended up happening was, <clears throat> excuse me, Google Oxygen, Google Project Oxygen, they took it upon themselves to deploy a disciplined data collection and rigorous analysis, the tools of science to uncover the insights into the art and craft of management. In other words, they looked at, um, they kind of, uh, to use the phrase, they ate their own dog food. Google is a company of analytics and engineers. And what they decided to do was, well, let's take what we do, what we're good at, our analysis, our engineering, um, our, our ability to crunch data and apply this to this problem of how do we make good leaders and invest in good leaders in our organization. So they set out the mission of Project Oxygen was to build better managers. And their data-driven 
culture responded very well. It was not a matter of, oh, we're going to do these soft schools and get around and sing Kumbaya and make everybody communicate better and therefore life will be better. It's let's dig into the data of what really does make a good manager. And then let's apply that systematically to our organization and we'll prioritize uh, based on what we see will give the biggest impact. And so they, they went back through their history of all of their performance reviews, their feedback surveys. Um, they run a top manager award internally. They took that data and they crunched it all together through different angles using sophisticated measures that showed that even the smallest incremental changes in manager, manager quality made a big difference. <clears throat> And when they got to the end, the big shock was that the data, the things that they found that made the biggest difference in the quality of their top managers and their top employees, STEM expertise came in dead last. In fact, what you'll see is in the list of the oxygen behaviors, there used to be eight, now there are 10 oxygen behaviors for Google's best managers. This list very tightly mimics the same sort of qualities or these qualities can be mapped back to the same sort of soft skills that organizations are looking for in their new hires. They want people who are good coaches that empower, um, that are productive and results oriented. They want people who can communicate and support career development and that have a clear vision and strategy, but more than have it that then can implement that through their people. We'll break these down here one by one. So let's look at the top seven oxygen soft skills. These are the skills that are most important um, based on the research in Project Oxygen, which this is multi-year research. This has been going on. They started Oxygen in, in, in uh, 2008, and this research has been uh, going on since then. And the last two uh, items that were just added to this list were, were recently added, I think, in February of this year. So uh, this, is, this is ongoing. So number one is a good coach. By a good coach, they, they say that, that managers need to have regular one-on-ones with their team members. They found that things like managers who thought they were communicating well because they passed in the hall daily and spoke often with their people, but they weren't doing it formally as a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and the, that when you deliver that, you have to be fully present and focused on the team member you're talking to. They also found it was important that managers be able to balance positive motivational and negative constructive feedback within these reviews. They need to be able to balance giving freedom with still being available to advise. So in other words, you they want to be, they need to be able to empower and not micromanage. They need to be able to delegate. Um, the quote that was given is the most effective managers realize that they work for their teams and not the other way around. They're inclusive. They create an inclusive team environment. They show concern for the success and well-being of each individual on their team. So that includes expressing interest for their, their personal wellness, their uh, career life balance, and themselves as individuals with life outside of work, not just in their what they're doing at work on the job. They are able to focus on what the team needs to increase productivity, and they prioritize work to eliminate roadblocks. They can use their own influence and uh, tenure with the company to remove roadblocks so that the teams can, uh, can perform, can provide results. So by doing that, they're, they're making an investment in the team and the work 
but it's not just an investment in the technical skills to do the work. They're a good communicator and listener. Um, they recognize that communication is two-way. Um, they hold all hands meetings regularly. They're straightforward about messages, about goals, and they encourage open dialogue among team members. They discuss performance. They provide impactful opportunities to grow uh, something, develop new skills. They may encourage somebody to take some other additional training to master a skill and become the go-to expert on the team. They may encourage a team member to take a lateral move to expand their uh, skills so that they can move up in the organization. And last, they have a compelling shared vision, uh, which is crucial to the success of the team. And it, it allows everybody to stay focused and move forward in the same direction. These are all skills, all of these seven oxygen skills, the top seven before you get to has enough technical skill to be able to lead the team, which is at Google's pretty much a given. They are hiring the highest level of technical people with the highest level of technical expertise. So the development that needs to happen in building managers is are in these areas of soft skills and being able to coach and lead people. The people analytics manager at Google says, this is data we can do something with. Now we can start measuring against it. So we're taking now, these are soft skills, but once we've identified which ones matter in our organization, and we've used the data to prove that these are the skills that do matter, now we can start measuring against those skills. So they changed their feedback surveys to measure specific oxygen behaviors. Now that they have a list of those behaviors, they can measure against them. How much time are people spending coaching their team? Are they actually communicating a clear vision? Are they providing career support? These are questions that are now put into the 360 degree surveys that are given for feedback. These are things that are measured and brought in forward in the organization when they do the uh, internal uh, awards. And those are the things that awards are being given for, which are evidence of having exhibiting these behaviors. And those are the behaviors now that they train for. By publicizing and training managers on these eight behaviors, we saw an improvement in management at Google and team outcomes like turnover, satisfaction, and performance over time. The highest scoring managers had the less, least, least amount of team turnover. Their retention related more strongly to manager quality than to seniority, performance, tenure, or promotions. They knew that because they could break that down based on how they set up the surveys and how they crunched the data that came back. There was a very tight connection between manager quality and team member uh, happiness. You see that time and time again in studies that they, they always say people, you know, uh, stay or leave based on the quality of their manager. Employees with high scoring bosses consistently reported greater satisfaction overall and scored higher in innovation, work-life balance, and career development. So what's your biggest barrier to soft skills training? We'll run another little poll here. And, and having seen the Google um, case study and looked at how they, how they use their data, what is your biggest barrier? So these results are coming in. Uh, please continue to vote. Uh, but it does look like we are getting a strong majority here under culture and time seem to be the, the barrier, with culture being 
a little bit stronger. There are some others coming in as well. Not enough great training materials. It's hard to find solid materials that teach these soft skills. Um, and it's hard to develop those without, uh, you know, the materials already. Um, it's a combination of budget, culture, and a time and time at my company, says another person. So if you'd like to vote, we'll give you about uh, five more seconds. So go ahead and vote before we close. We really would like to hear from you. And we'll close that, and here's those results. Um, so 49% said culture, 34% said time, 11% are saying that budget is the issue, and then a combined 6% between skills and material and all of the other uh, barriers people are facing. Well, that's, I, I'm really, I'm actually kind of surprised and not surprised at the cultural aspect. I think what, I think what surprises me the most is because we're talking to instructional designers and trainers, you guys get culture. That's your world. You grok culture. It's hard dealing with organizations sometimes, especially if you're in a highly technical organization like they were at Google. It can be really hard to make the case that even that culture is a real thing that really matters, and it matters so very much. Um, hopefully, taking a case like this Google case, you'd be able to break that down and bring that to your organization and show them how, if in an organization like Google, um, they learn the value of doing soft skill training for developing managers and, and, and the value of managers to begin with, uh, people managers. If you can look at that case and bring that back to your organization along with some of the other data. I hope that that can help you begin to shape your culture. What I can say in a nutshell is that if you are dealing with a hard culture that values ROI and data, when you go to make your case to them, you have to talk their same language. You have to be able to use internal data. So what kind of surveys and internal uh, data can you pull to help make that case that this is important and also set up a gap from the beginning. Do a measurement of what is your current state? Where are you right now? And then make some hypotheses about what may change if you apply certain levels of training in certain areas. Start small, do a small pilot. There's no better way to get an increase in budget than to do something small that's so small that the budget is, is, is you know, it's like, what do we have to lose? It can only do good, right? And then uh, you deliver that training, you show some results, and then from that you can build into a larger initiative over time. Our customizable courseware can help. Um, with our customizable courseware at eLearning Brothers, um, we have a soft skills, we also have a sales library. I'm going to focus here on the soft skills library. We offer the training in your three most popular e-learning tools. We give you the source code so that you can take and customize it specifically for your organization. You also get classroom guides and slides so that you can deliver these as blended programs. And you don't have to deliver the whole training in one seating. You can take and break out the lessons. You can mix and match. You can do part of it as e-learning, part of it as classroom, part of it as webinar. Um, fully customizable source built in the native source of the tool, so it's easy for you to change. Um, you can tie it in with other initiatives. If you're in an or if you're in an organization where the culture is very highly technical, um, try sneaking some of these modules into larger programs, like uh, make it a part of the onboarding with the technical training, but break out some of these lessons that are more soft skills focused and kind of play them in. Um, or take the scenarios that are in some of the soft skills and rewrite them so that the situations are based on uh, the context of 
technical situations and problems that the people who would be solving in your organization. We recently did a survey here at eLearning Brothers and one of the number one things that our customers told us about customizable courseware was, we don't need you to make it specific for our industry. We want you to give us the source and make it good solid learning and we'll take it that next level and make it specific to our industry because we know our organization, we know our culture, we know our industry. That was really great feedback that we've been learning from. Um, and it's actually shaping how we move forward with customizable courseware. The soft, soft skills that we offer in our customizable courseware are uh, soft skills that you can tie back to all of those skills that were most important um, to new hiring managers. They also tie back and dovetail in with skills that are important in the uh, Google Oxygen top, top 10 skills. Uh, communicating effectively, coaching others, interpersonal skills, negotiation skills, everything um, you do, people don't necessarily understand that, that daily work is a series of negotiations, um, just like budget negotiations. Do we spend our money here? Do we spend our money there? There are also time and resource negotiations that are happening every day at work. Um, time management, meeting management, presentation skills, creative problem solving. These are all important, very important skills, um, for, especially for new hires, um, as well as seasoned managers. Um, and then, of course, managing risk, business ethics, harassment, conflict, conflict resolution. But then how do you show that you care for your employees? Um, one of the ways you can show you care about them on a personal level is by uh, providing some training in, in stress management and work-life balance, some of the things that are uh, affect them on personally and at home as well as at work. So this is a way, um, this is just kind of very quick overview of customizable courseware and soft skills. Um, if you have additional questions and want to see anything specifically, we encourage you to, um, at the end, Andrew will tell you how you can get a hold of one of our uh, sales professionals. Um, also, if you email him and, and ask, uh, you know, he'll pass on any, any questions or anything that you have for me specifically, and I'll be happy to answer those as well um, and help, help you draw the line between how do these skills tie back to some of this data and this strategy that we talked about here. That's bringing us towards the end of this presentation as a recap, uh, what does research tell us? You know, we, we talked about what does the research tell us about the value of soft skills training. We looked at the Google Oxygen case study for making uh, the business case and uh, for soft skills training. And we uh, also just really, really briefly touched on uh, ELB customizable courseware. Um, that's the easiest one for us to do in a follow up. But I'm also here to answer any other additional questions that you might have about what we talked about here today. Thanks, Chris. While those uh, questions are coming in, I'm going to take the screen back for a moment. And I'd like to draw everybody's attention to the handout section of your GoToWebinar screen. There's a, a section called Handouts, and there's a um, a PDF you can download. So Chris had mentioned that uh, that the all of these sources resources are available um, in a PDF. So you can grab that right now, or you can wait a few hours, and I'll email it to you as well. But um, you know, if you're ready to grab that and start researching and digging, by all means, grab that uh, from the handout section. Uh, she also mentioned that if you have questions, you can send an email. Send an email to info at elearningbrothers.com and uh, we'll do everything we can to answer your questions, either about customizable courseware or about soft skills in general. Chris loves to, to take general questions and, uh, and share some of the research that she's, that she's developed and, and found. Also, something really cool, the ELBX, our first users conference that we're hosting, is this year, June 11th, and uh, we'd love for you guys to come. And Chris is gonna be presenting. Chris, do you know what, what your presentation is gonna be on yet? I think 
what I'm going to be working on is I was originally going to do something on scenarios, but I think after doing this here, it's evolving. And I think I want to do something on uh, digging into a little bit more in developing a program and uh, creating a blended learning program. So uh, if any of you would be specifically interested in how could I use some of these customizable courseware titles and work them into a blended learning program, what kind of a framework could I use for setting that up? Uh, that's what I'm going to be digging into at ELBX. And if you come on down, um, let me know you're going to be there. And we'll set up a time. Uh, we could actually even work one-on-one -on -one with your specific needs and goals. It's going to be great. We've got uh, different tracks for for you at the conference. There's, uh, there's some that just talk about development. So I mean, you can really get down to the nitty gritty at that conference. So ELBX is coming up. Um, it's less than 80 days away. It's really close. We're pretty excited about it. Um, and like I said, send uh, send an email or give us a call, 801-796-2767. We, we can show you some of the courses, show you what's covered. We don't want you to buy into anything that you don't know what you're getting. Um, there is one question that has come in, Chris. Can the customizable courses be purchased individually or only as a group uh, library? That's a great question. Now, when we first launched the product, they were um, offered, and we, we, we were specifically offering them um, as a, a group, a group library together. Um, in our new subscription model, um, you need to talk to one of our, our uh, sales consultants, and they'll be able to show you how you can buy a subscription and build out your soft skills library over time based on the needs of your organization. So the quick answer to that is yes, you can buy just one if you like. If there's one, um, you can buy a subscription that will allow you to build uh, over time. And, and depending on the size of your subscription, um, that opens up other goodies, games, and other uh, things that you can use, assets that you can use when you're customizing these. On that topic, we actually have a webinar coming up next week on the 5th. Um, Jeff uh, Sprogue in our office is going to be talking about those new library packages, and they're going to be really cool. And, and they're, gonna, they're a really easy, simple way to, to get access to the customizable courseware library and the soft score, these soft skills courses. Um, so yeah, be watching for that. That's on April 5th. Uh, you can register for that today. Also, you'll be X. You can register for that today. Go to elearningbrothers.com. But most importantly, give us a call or send us an email, info at elearningbrothers.com. Thank you so much, Chris. Thanks everybody for your questions and for uh, participating in our webinar. We hope that you've got what you were expecting and hoping and needed. And we'll see you guys next time. Thank you, everyone.